and welcome to WRPB and WRPB Studios. You know, everybody has a backstory. Everybody. Mine, for those who you know me, know that I was molested as a kid, and um, it took me years to talk about it. <coughs> a lot of people have other issues. A lot of people are in recovery. And there are so many places, if you look for the help, you'll find it. But you got to want to find it. With me is Ross from Just Believe Recovery. Hey, how are you? I am good. Good. Okay. So, of course, you have a backstory. Yep, I sure do. Okay. But we're not going to really go into that. Okay. My question to you is, how long have you been around this industry? Uh, I have been working in uh, the treatment industry for um, almost a year now. Okay. Did you get into that industry and say, I want to work in this industry because of your backstory? <laughs> I got into the industry, so um, in 2020, I, get, well, I got laid off of my job of um, 12 years. My background's actually in IT and in government data. Oh, okay. And um, I was fortunate enough where I could take a couple months off, and then somebody um, approached me, and they're like, you can talk to anybody. We think that you'd be great in this, and, and that's how I fell into this. Okay, so I'm going to go backwards for a second. Sure. You were an addict? Yes. Okay, I guess you're always an addict. Is that, is that the belief? I mean, I believe I was born an addict, yeah. Okay, so how long are you clean? Uh, I am clean. I just celebrated three years. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. You know what really bothers me? Hmm. When someone puts on Facebook, I've been clean two years or six months, can I get a like? Oh. Your like is you. Yeah. You should be... Because uh, I've been clean 65 years, so I should get a... a, a Ton of life. <laughs> okay, I mean, really. It, 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 correct me if I'm wrong. You being clean and sober a year, six months, three days, ten years, thirty years, that's something that you should be proud of. I think so. I think, well, I mean, I think like the whole like, when we put stuff on social media that goes back to our, our desire for instant gratification and for, um, <clears throat> Uh, we have this desire, it's my belief at this point, it, you know, we have this desire for others' approval and, you know, and that, that ties in perfectly with that instant gratification of, oh, I did this and now, you know, give me, give me that gratification. <coughs> and when I see it, I won't give a like, but in my heart, I'll say, that's really good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. But you don't need my approval. You need your approval. You need to know that you are successful. So... Well, we were talking before, mm -hmm. my belief, and you know that I've never even tried any drugs, zero, is that I don't care how many times someone goes to treatment, if they don't want to get healthy, mm -hmm. it's never going to happen. Is that true? Yeah, I 100% believe that. Um, you know, my experience here is I spent years trying to get clean, and um, it took me a really long time to get clean because I had I would have the willingness for just a moment and then you know that would wean um, and you know treatment is exactly like that as well um, you know there has to be that willingness and that desire to change and <coughs> surrender and it's not it's not just like that in addiction a great example is I had a heart attack my dad had heart attacks and you have a heart attack you go for surgery and mm -hmm. you go that's it. I'm not eating cake anymore. <laughs> but our minds forget because that's the way we're, we're built. Yeah. And right away I'm eating uh, yodos. Okay. So <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay. I, and I've never been through your stage, but so it's like, all right, I'm going to get clean and I'm going to do this. Yeah. And then something kicks in and you forget some of the bad things you went through. Yeah. So I think like, you know, um, for this addict, um, you know, I have for a very long time, I have a built in forgetter. I would only remember like the really good drug experiences. <laughs> like, I mean, transparently, like drugs were a lot of fun and um, <clears throat> until they became not so fun and until they became miserable. And when it became miserable, I would remember like the, oh, that was such a great time. And so I had this like built in forgetter. And uh, so, it, you know, it took me, it took me, it took me a lot of cake to remember. <laughs> That, that I have a choice today. Is it, is it, if someone's an addict, they say that every day is a day in recovery. Yes. Okay, and every day you have to think about your recovery. Mm hmm. Do you, does it get easier? 
You know, when I and I love talking to addicts, um, especially ones in early recovery. Um, you know, getting getting clean is easy, but staying clean is more difficult to do. Um, but does it get easier? Do you lose the desire? Yes, a hundred percent. You lose the desire. Um, you learn a new way to live. You know, the life that I have today, the life that I have the opportunity to live today is, is the life that my disease told me I was never deserving or worthy of. Okay. So, just belief. Yeah. Drug, alcohol, anything else that you do? Uh, so, um, we are focused on drugs and alcohol. Um, you know, we are um, dual diagnosis capable, so we are capable of treating um, uh, a myriad of uh, mental health issues as well. We have an on-site um, staff psychiatrist, which comes in. Okay, is it a, the facility is a, like a five bed, 10 bed, is that kind of facility? Or is it outpatient? So, we are a 30 bed inpatient facility. Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, yeah, in um, uh, Port St. Lucie. Okay, so, because I know so little about this, so I'm just like kind of learning. So you go, do you get Baker acted there? Do you get court sent there? Do you get... <laughs> um, that's a great question. Um, so I work a lot with the courts. Um, we have some folks who um, are sent who are court mandated. Mm -hmm. um, others find us through, um, through the internet, through word of mouth. Um, find us through Psychology Today, through a variety of different different sources. Okay, so are the court mandated ones the ones that are at most risk moving forward? Because it's not something they wanted to do, it's something that they're being forced to do. What's interesting about the court mandated ones, so I work a lot with the um, 19th Judicial Circuit, okay. so the, which is their drug and alcohol court um, for Martin and St. Lucie counties. And so the ones that come in through drug court tend to do like very well. Oh, interesting. Because they know the alternative is if they don't do well, then the reality is is that they will likely incur some 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 time away from home. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> is NA or AA key factor in getting clean? Yes. Um for this addict, yeah, um, okay. I've worked. I've worked AA, CMA, um, which is Crystal Meth Anonymous. Okay. Um, and I today I work uh, Narcotics Anonymous. Okay. My belief is that the the only therapist that can help an addict is somebody who was an addict and lived it. Mm -hmm. I, as a survivor of sexual abuse as a kid, I don't care how many times you send your kid who was molested to a psychiatrist or some a PhD if you didn't live it you really don't know the whole experience I can't I can sit here and say hey you know what doing drugs is bad just say no but I don't know how it pulls you in okay and I from interviewing a bunch of people it pulls you in mm -hmm. okay and do people walk just walk into your facility do you have like walk-ins? We do have walk-ins. Are those the people that walk in to just believe and say, I need to get clean? You know, here's a great story. Um, I think it was my third or fourth month there, and I was at work, I, it was like a Friday night, and it was like six or seven o'clock at night. And, and I hear, we have a doorbell, and some, I hear the doorbell ringing, and I go out there, and there's somebody standing there, and they're like, I, I walked here, and, and I, I need to go to treatment. And, and all they had was a phone, and that was it. <laughs> you think they don't have a phone? Mm -hmm. a, they might not have anything else, but they have they a have, phone. They have a phone, yeah. But okay. that's how they found us. Okay, so they come in. Do you take them in immediately? So there's an intake process. So, um, you know, what we do is we will assess people based on what they're using, like, uh, you know, treatment history, um, length of use, um, you know, we are uh, an insurance-based business, mm -hmm. um, so they have to, uh, I hate to use the words qualify, but um, in order to go into various levels of care, they have to meet um, <coughs> certain criteria. The lights don't come on by themselves. I tell it to people right. all the time. And the, not that you're looking to make a bazillion dollars, but if you make enough money to keep your lights on, it's more people you can help. 
You know, and that's the thing that, you know, we are a smaller agency, and the thing that sets us apart is, um, you know, there's a very big sense of family there. You know, we are a 12-step abstinence-based program. Um, we are very heavy in AA, DAA, and NA. And so we, we, we bring meetings in through H&I commitments, which is hospitals and institutions. Um, we, we work the first three steps while they're there. Um, we, we take them to outdoor meetings um, so they can kind of get immersed into that culture as well. And you know, we hold various uh, groups and, and individual uh, therapy sessions um, throughout the week. Is part of the key to, and just believe, is part of the key to have a sponsor uh, or that support? Well, so yes. So part of for you know part of getting clean is to have a sponsor and to and to work the steps with that sponsor. Um, you know because we are uh, you know a healthcare facility, we can't we you know we don't allow folks to readily come into the facility out of an overabundance of caution for our our clients and their privacy. Um, but one of the steps is to get a sponsor. So what we like to do is encourage folks to, to get a sponsor and to listen for the similarities and go up and talk to that person and get some phone numbers. And when they leave us, call them. So I'm going to get out of this conversation that meetings are important. Mm -hmm. Okay, very important to go to meetings. Yes. Okay, very important to have the support around you. Mm -hmm. Okay, those things are just things that need to be done in order to continue to move forward and be safe, correct? Yeah, um, you know, when I came into the rooms, I didn't believe that all these people were laughing and smiling and they were all friendly, they all knew each other. And I was like, I don't know what these people are on because <laughs> uh, I was just so miserable. And, um, you know, today I look at it as I have the opportunity to go to meetings. I had the opportunity to have relationships with people and I had the opportunity to live today. You know, when I was using, the only thing that I ever saw were the four walls of my bedroom and that was it. Oh, wow. So, and I could be wrong, but I'm a business so I go networking mm -hmm. with a group of people. Mm -hmm. And that becomes business and social. Sure. So I'm guessing your meetings is a social function too? Yeah, I mean, I you know, <sighs> What's, what's beautiful about recovery is, you know, I came into the rooms of recovery, I was so broken and so damaged. And I had, I had all these walls up and, um, and I used to joke about it. Like I was the great wall of China and no one's gonna get past <laughs> this. And, um, you know, eventually those walls begin to, to crumble brick by brick. And the people that I ran into meetings um, became friends and many of them are now family. And that's the, and I guess it's kind of cool because whoever picked the name Just Believe, hmm. it's really an excellent name for that industry because you got to believe, in my opinion, you got to believe that you can do this, mm -hmm. okay? And you got to believe in the steps that it takes to do this. Mm -hmm. How long do people stay in your facility? Well, let me first back, back, backtrack to the name. Okay. So it actually comes from a piece of literature which reads, um, even if you don't believe, we believe. Okay. So f with that said, is it like, hey, I come in and I have the need to get clean, but I don't believe I can? But I believe you can. Okay. And that's... And you just got to believe. That's the model that you guys live by. Yeah. And I get... People come on here and do stuff with us, and we do marketing for them, and video and stuff, become part of the family. Yeah. Okay? Um, surely, I don't like all my family. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, they become part of the family, and you want... I'm going to guess that when Joe is clean for a year, and you kind of met him at a meeting, I guess you feel a sense of pride in that also. Yeah. Um... I, I do. I um, I recently had a birthday. Oh. And there I have was one coming. <laughs> and there was someone who, you know, came into our program and was just struggled. Uh, in and out, in and out, in and out. Um, and our program's 30 days. Okay. 
and uh, you know, this person sent me a message. They said, "Hey, I, 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 I saw it was your birthday. I wanted to let you know that I'm clean today, and thank you so much." And that's like, you can't buy that. You can't buy that. I dated a young lady. She was 17. She had a child. I were at a video store. And this goes back. Uh, I was probably 20, so it goes back 45 years. Mm -hmm. And she was clean. Well, of course, she was. She was a kid. She went one way, I went the other. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we have this nightmare called Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I find her on Facebook, and she's about to celebrate her ninth year clean and sober and get a chip. That's amazing. She lives in Arizona. This yeah. goes back years. Okay. I flew to Arizona to support her in yeah. getting her chip. I do a podcast called From Trauma to Success. Uh -huh. uh, the first three guests, one was eight and a half years clean, nine and a half years clean, and 13 years clean. The stories are unbelievable mm -hmm. in some cases. And you look at them today, and you would not know that they went through a lot of this. Yeah. Is exchanging one addiction for another something that almost always happens? I think that inherently, you know, with the human experience that we inevitably change addictions and we, we swap them out. I think that um, when we come into recovery, oftentimes we're so relieved to not have to do the same thing that we experience like this pink cloud and where everything is just like cotton candy and it feels <laughs> amazing. Um, that in itself is addicting. Um, I get that. Okay. Um, is it hard for you to go, like for me, my zen is going to a restaurant or a bar, eating an appetizer or a food, and listening to music, and usually by the water. Yeah. Now, I don't have, it doesn't bother me because I don't drink, so mm -hmm. not a big deal. Can you, at this point in your life, do that without having to think that you have to have a drink? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because oh, yeah. I know peer pressure and the social world that we live in is about drinking, and every time I see something about drugs, I'm like, Ugh, whatever. And uh, look, that falls on you, or you, or you, or you. I got enough of my own issues to sit here and have to worry about whether you're gonna make the right move or the wrong move. Mm -hmm. I wish you the best, mm -hmm. okay? And I, don't, I hate to say this, and every time I see a post of someone who's been clean, I'm proud of them because it's cool that they did the right thing. Yeah. And I'm proud of them for two reasons. One, I'm proud of them for them, mm -hmm. but I'm proud of them for realizing that they're making their family proud and taking away th the everyday family worrying about them dying, yeah. worry about things like that. So those are my important things. We're getting to the top of our time. How do people find you? You have a website? We do. Uh, can I circle back to something yeah, real quick? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, part of, part of recovery is showing the newcomer that it works. Um, you know, showing that kid who's been sleeping underneath a school bus, uh, who's sleeping outside, um, who is homeless and they haven't eaten in days, or who's locked in the four walls of their bedroom. Um, so when I see those messages on Facebook of like, hey, I'm celebrating this, you know, I, I'm, I'm elated for that. And, and it's my hope that when I see that, that there's an addict out there who's reading it and, and identifies and says, like, that's possible. If, if this person can do it, then I can. You know, and if you can touch one person, mm -hmm. you're successful. Yeah. Okay. When I came out with that as much as a kid and spoke in front of a group, my first group was 250 people. It was very cathartic for me. Uh -huh. And then someone came up to me and said, Wayne, how do you do it? How do you talk about it? My cousin gave me cocaine when I was 10, uh, sexually abused me and told me he killed my family mm. if I told him anything. And I'm thinking to myself, m mine was a walk in the park. I was 11, 10 and a half, driving a boat, going to Florida, going to Disney, doing all that kind of stuff. And I didn't know any different or any better. And then I hear some other stories and they're just brutal. They're just brutal. But if I can touch one person, I said on a crisis line for sexual adults who are sexually abused. If I could touch one person, yeah. that's my thumbs up like. Yeah. It doesn't have to be on Facebook. I know what the real world offers. I know how tough it is normally. And if you have that handicap of you're an addict, or if you have the handicap that you were molested as a kid, or if you're a gambler, just every day that you get through and other people see, you don't understand that that's not just a benefit for you, 
it's a benefit for them too, mm -hmm. knowing that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yep. Just Believe has a website? We sure do. It's um, www.justbelieverecovery.com. A phone number? It is 1-888-380-0667. Guys, here's the thing. You want to use a professional, and you want to go where someone's going to not just take you in, but stand beside you and care what happens to you. <clears throat> That's why these places exist, and they exist with people who've gone through the experience and get the pride of seeing you make it through. There's always light at the end of the tunnel, and it should never define who you are. Mm. I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you so much. It's been great. Everybody will be right back.